CO2 kind of goes yeah, up slow and your light goes up slow too. They match. Yeah. So that's a nice. It's actually more like this. How do you get the CO2? Like that. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, there's a couple ways to do it. I mean, my match is the uh, light because I have control over the light as well. And so I just, you know, as the CO2 goes up, the light kind of does the same thing. It's up to a certain point, the light turns off, the CO2 turns off, it goes down again. So, I mean, you, you can control that through light, you, know, you can control it through pH, you can do things where, you know, as your CO2 gets to a certain level in the tank, uh, the reactor or the internal thing or whatever it is, or a timer does something to the gas or remove the CO2. And so you get this kind of thing that goes up like this, rather than like that. You know, like that kind of. And then it you know gets up to that, that peak up there. Usually it's kind of a lethal level or a real high stress level. Fish. So. so what initiates it? The the light or the pH? You no, know, the light drives CO2 uptake. So you've got your light set on a, on a program, and then that they respond to the light. Well, yeah, the plants do, and then the CO2 sort of follows that because I can match how, what the CO2 does with the light. So those two are linked together. Okay. But uh, and then they all have wet dry filters. Um, I used to have canister filters in this tank for a long time. The tank does ten times better with wet dry. But the Star Giant is nice because uh, you can do stuff like this. So it's a good place to store plants. <laughs> <laughs> now I have to plant in the gravel. And I can leave them there indefinitely. And uh, the plants are fine. And um, you know, I can use stem plants, uh, Meconia, any of, the, any of the stem plants. I can just sort of wiggle them in here like this and they'll stick. And uh, Or I can take the bottom stumps, put them in here, and then they'll sprout new growth. And then they'll They'll grow up nice. And the Star Giant didn't mind, you know, it, it's pretty low, uh, light tolerant plant. So, I, I'm still pulling out buses out of this mat every once in a while. A couple, of people, <laughs> a couple of people got uh, some Star Giant, you got some you know, little buses, little ones, you know, not the big ones. But this tank, uh, you know, it, it wasn't a, a very hard concept, you know, I decided to redo it. I had this, you know, some cool pieces of manzanita. I had, I had these branches kind of going off, off into the space like that. And you go in there and you hit it, and yeah. you know, try and trim and put a little row in, and you hit it again. And I'm like, ah, it's, it's bullshit. So I took it out, and then I, uh, you know, got it looking nice, got my picture, took it out, and I thought, well, I'd really have something kind of coming down you know, like this. And you know, I could have just put a bunch of this. In between the rows, you know, a bunch of the uh, UC or whatever HC, and it would look pretty cool with the, the, the Ricky Cardia and all that coming down. But I was like, eh, it's too boring. It's too simple. I've got, you know, just a few species here, and that looks good. I want to keep that. Here it's just going to be the Busey. So I wanted something with a lot more color. You know, a bright, pretty tank. Uh, this one's an easy sort of lawn type. Not really any boomy, but you know, it has sort of the wood. But it's, it's, it's definitely, I haven't seen anybody's tanks like one of these before, and still haven't seen one yet since. So, um, I used to, I wanted a Mono HC in here originally, but the damn fish kept picking it up. Uh, I had a bunch of these Royals and some other fish at the time. And uh, we left from Portugal, we came back, and the power was off for three days. Mm -hmm. uh, HC all died off real quick. So I tried to put it back again, never would take very well. And so I went with the Star Johnny and it, uh, I started off with a couple of stems for 10 bucks. A stem. 10 bucks for a stem. And a uh, little patch like that. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go ahead and get the whole thing. So instead of getting greedy and uh, trying to sell as many as I could at a $10 price, I grew a lot and then I just would sell 20 for 25 and it's pretty much stayed at that price since, so. Um, and, you know, I always give people extra, too, you know, so they, you know, I say 20, but it's probably more than 30, 40, which is easy. So, but, you know, farming this stuff out, but it's just an easy plant to take care of. And so, 
know, I don't do too much to it. Lips that you know grows like weed, contrast well. So that tank, you know, is pretty well set. Um, I'm happy with it. I can play around with different stems in the back here if I want. Um, this tank's a lot more sort of your collectoritis, <laughs> but there's trade-off, all right? Say if I find another red plant I like, I have to get rid of this one <laughs> or that one, you know, the common ones. And so I need something that's that deep red or that dark red or whatever to do it. And, you know, the this plant here, the uh, mini, Renicki um, does really well, but it's 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 not one of these plants you want to uproot and then replant, top uproot, top uproot, replant. Something you want to just kind of live leave there. Some of these older leaves get kind of ratty, like that. That's not a, a very useful leaf to plant really. Here's some down here that are pretty ratty looking, like those. Here's some with holes, but they're old leaves. And, you know, this is a very dense growing plant, so as these leaves sort of get ratty and ugly, you pinch them like this, just like what I'm doing. It's kind of, it's it's more of something you might see in bonsai, you know, where you're kind of preening and picking each little leaf off, checking. But as you do this, you end up with a plant later, these little side shoots down here will shoot off. They'll grow out nice and be clean just like the top ones are. And uh, it'll clean up the plant pretty well, pretty nicely as well. And this uh, is Liguia spirocarpa. This is easy plant. You just, like this. Dun, da -dun. That's it. <laughs> so um, that takes, you know, you know, a minute to do all that. So what am I going to do with this stump? You know, this stump will grow out some nice little, uh, it's probably the daughter. So I have to start oh, shining again. <laughs> three weeks, that'll be a plant about like that. Two or three plants will come off that stump. Or you can put it outside and put in a little tray of some water and a little lid on it. And it'll uh, grow out nicely there. The UG, pretty much, you got to uproot that. Make little plugs. Twist it and pack it in nice and tight. And uh, it'll grow in nice. Uh, this stuff, the um, air Caroline compressant, this is an easy plant to grow. It's like uh, the Parker eye, except it's giant. And as the leaves, some of the leaves get ratty or old, I have to pick them like that. It's hard to plant initially, and you don't want to pick at it or move it or touch it for the first maybe two or three weeks until it gets rooted. But once it gets rooted, it stays stays put pretty easy. That's just the HC. And, uh, about ready to be ripped up and maybe do something else. Oh, the mini pellia? So, yeah, it's all mini pellia here. So. Yeah, and some of it's kind of loose because it's pulled up. But you can see here, there's a hole. See that hole I drill? I just take a bit like this, drill the holes in the wood like that, and then it grows out and it'll be like, like that after maybe two months or two, something like that. And, you know, four or five months, it'll be like this. And, uh, you know, then you can take that off, sell it for maybe 50 bucks for a chunk like that. <laughs> so, but it's, it's, you know, it's not like Ricky at all. It's, it's, it's a lot easier to deal with. And, um, nice plant. So I had a, a large lawn of that. I've kind of kept it in a small little area here. But I usually just push the finger back to, you know, take the finger along push it back into its little spot there. It'll keep trying to creep over and infest the uh, Rickycardia. Rickycardia gets infested with the, uh, the uh, UG. Yes, I've got you. I've got you. Where's your mom? It's empty. It's empty. Makes noise. Makes lots of noise. Lots and lots of noise. The other thing is like the Eurocaridon cicadum, it did really well right here for a while. It's empty. And then it it's empty. Looking so well, so I put it back here where it done it better. Daddy, daddy, daddy. Seems like, you know, if you have current going over the tops of the plants, they seem to do real well. This is sort of the dead spot right here. 
this, this uses a blood vomit. I thin this out and sold a bunch though, so that's why there's only a few instead of about a hundred. There were about a hundred of them right in here. Um, uprooting that around those edges of those plants a little harder. And it takes more time. This is the quick, easy, dirty way. And you see, even with all those other leaves coming in, I'm missing them. Because I'm keeping my scissors at the same angle of the leaves. If I did it like this, you know, I'd chop the leaves. If I came up, I'd chop the leaves. But if I keep it at the same angle, then I'll chop those leaves very much. And this plant's a really aggressive grower. No. Left over here, blood vomit there. And so uh, these, these stumps will grow back real quick, like in a week. I'll have about, you know, that much growth. Nice new tops off, off those guys. So it's an easy plant to grow. Cut a little strip. is something I can sell. This way, you get nice tight tension. You can tension all the way around. And some people pull it out, way out like this, and just wrap it around, pull it down around the piece of wood. If you just do this once every you know, month or two, it spreads the moss around a little bit better, keeps it looking nice and tidy. Cotton string just rots after about a month anyway. Now I won't have to do much to this piece of wood for the next basically month or two. I can pull off a little bit here and there and sell some or whatever. But visit is a nice, nice uh, color contrast. And it looks nice on the, on the 
a lot of people have trouble growing it versus, you know, like Christmas moss, some of the others. And back in it goes. Yeah. That gives the space for the plants, too, a little bit that are around it also. Give you a little room, you know, a little bit of distance. That's something a, a lot of the Dutch scapers, that's one of the criteria for a nice, nice Dutch tank. You want some space in between each group of plants. And so you can do that through trimming, careful trimming and positioning, or you can just put a piece of wood in there, which kind of breaks up the, you know, the man-made lines and make, gives it a more natural feel. And, uh, you know, so you can kind of do it that way, too. That was my idea, you know, is it gives some space as well, which is a Dutch aesthetic. It has nothing to do with nature style at all. Nothing to do with that's That's a pure Dutch uh, style. Thank you.